love it. In Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take care. Take heed. I like take heed. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock. That would be you guys. Over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. That would be me. To feed the church of God. That would be all of you and me. Which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing, this is Paul. Shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock? He goes all the way down. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all of them which are sanctified. That's you. That's you, all of those that are sanctified. So as your shepherd, I am to come to you and prepare you. You guys have been easy to prepare. Why? Jordan Rivers has been in existence for eight years, seven years, I think eight years. I think eight years that we've been in existence. And uh, from the get-go, I could give you little increments of information, and you processed it. Until now, you are no longer weenies. You are mature believers in the word of the Lord. Now, some that have just came into the fold might be going, what? Mature? Oh, yeah. We make you grow up here. I do. I challenge you with the word. So does Pastor Jasta. So did my daddy. He's not here anymore. He is in heaven. But we still challenge you in the word of the Lord. So with that being said, I'm not duplicating Matthew 24, and I'm not going to preach on Matthew 24 which is a prophetic chapter of the end times. I'm not going to preach on Luke 21, which is a prophetic chapter of the end times. Look them up yourself. I'm not preaching on Mark 13, which is a prophetic chapter of the end times. Okay? Matthew 24. Luke 21. Mark 13. Read them yourselves. They cover a lot of information that Jesus said would be happening in the very last days and during the tribulation. I will not be talking about, and I felt I needed to put this out there as a disclaimer, I will not be talking about the socialism and the communism set to come upon this country. Not, not talking about that. I'm not discussing China's plans for the U.S., I'm not discussing all the wars and the rumors of wars. I'm not discussing Israel, Iran, Turkey, Russia, the Ukraine, China, Taiwan, and Japan. I will not be discussing your loss of freedoms. These, these are all things you already know, okay? So anything you already know, I'm moving on to what you don't know. I will not be discussing the side effects of vaccination or the continued laws and mandates that will arise from a one world order that is setting to take place. I'm not discussing it. I will not discuss another pandemic or another variant. I'm not discussing financial collapse or currency updates or what's going on in Bitcoin. I went through a few pages of past prophecies, some I didn't even know existed. I did not know that the word of the Lord came and gave us prophetic words back in 2016 that were relevant for today. I just read through some of them and went, whoa, where'd that come from? 
Some of them I can't find in my computer because I don't know where I filed them. I remember a word called suddenly. I type in suddenly and nothing comes up, which means it's on a jump drive somewhere. Or it's at the print shop. So these are prophecies from past years. Let me see if any of them are prevalent today or if they have occurred in 2016. Many people will begin to seek me as foundations around them crumble. Nonprofit organizations will be stressed out on how to make ends meet. Because of the lack of resources, many will be turned away from care facilities, institutions, hospitals, and assistance. It will not make much sense, but there will simply not be enough available room for everybody that's hurting. The church will become inundated with those in need. It will become as a hospital, a place of healing, a beacon of hope. So get prepared. It will not be contained in four walls. Be prepared to be the church. I read that and went, 2016, wow, five years ago. Homeless, homelessness will increase, and woodland communities will spring up with residential addresses. Remember, whoever is generous to the poor lends to me, and I will repay him for what he does. Now, woodland communities, Linda had told me previously that when President Obama was in office, so this is just at the tail end when this word was given, that um, he had set up IP addresses for all of America, like every tenth of a mile has a new IP address for your internet. And so when the, new, when the immigrants were coming in by droves and they were bringing them in and reestablishing them, they would find a woodland community or a community of land and put it a tent and give it a rural address. Because I had asked the Lord, Lord, I didn't see that happen. He said, oh, yeah, that already happened. They already have it. The entire United States now has an address. Oh, interesting. Homelessness will increase. Okay. 2017, the word will be assaulted in schools and institutions like never before. Leadership will attempt to make those who stand for truth and what is morally sound out to be mentally ill with labels and titles attached to them. Great conflict will arise due to this assault on your faith. Wow. I was actually watching that in the media this week um, with the military that they were letting go that wouldn't, uh, they had a religious exemption, but they wouldn't allow it. And they're like, you know, they're, we're going to need to re-educate them. They're mentally unstable. Oh, really? Police officers, too. We need to re-educate those. People, they're unfit mentally. I thought, wow. Behold, the day is coming when fear will engulf the parks and city streets. Where there was never caution, now there will be warnings. I thought, I remember thinking, Lord, when did that happen? He said, are you kidding when they had lockdowns? Do you remember the parks being locked out? Warning, do not enter this. You cannot play on the playground equipment. You could have a cootie. You could pass along COVID. All children are barred from this public place. Warnings on streets and public parks. Hmm. The anchor of my word will not be the words of a news anchor. The media will be in a stupor and not be able to report what is happening as fast as it materializes. And some will leave their profession. Others will regret their voice of compromise. But my anchor will sustain you. What you see in the world will mirror opposite in the remnant church. When you see fear arise, you will see faith arise. 
my presence. When you see poverty consume the lives of those who are naked, poor, wretched, and blind, those that are lukewarm, you will see my provision for those who remain faithful in my word. Thank you, Lord. You've provided for us. You're an anchor. When you see the American church become timid and weak, you'll see the remnant become fierce and mighty in truth. Isn't that a cool word? That's 2017. Then 2018, everybody goes, where's the word in 2018? I said, the Lord didn't give me one. And they went, what? You always have a word at the beginning of the year. And I said, I'm sorry, I couldn't whip it up. He didn't say it. I couldn't write it. They're like, but, but, but. I said, no, but, but, buts. If it ain't the Lord, I don't want to speak it. In 2019, he said, the changes in America will be catastrophic. Mobile homes will exceed in sales. <laughs> As adults begin to look for means of escape from unstable communities, the world will become darker and under much threat, and many will ask, what's going on? Are we still the only ones sane? Are we the last ones? The temptation to quarantine yourself and isolate will be ongoing. 2019, before COVID. Resist it. Forsake not the assembly of yourselves together even more so as you see the day approaching. Wow. The eroding of freedom and rights will continue at such an acceleration that the government will not be able to override the corruption of the judicial system. Judges will take broader liberties and form new laws within their counties. And states will govern themselves without any governmental oversight. To counter this, there'll be undercover vigilante systems that will surface within communities and they'll begin to run their own communities. Wow. Those in leadership and within the entertainment industry that thought to operate undercover in pedophilia rings and satanic ritual abuse will now be exposed. So that was 2019. This revealing will be more than people can stomach. Many will grieve as little to nothing will be done to prosecute it or prevent it. I did not like that word. I did not like that word at all. I told the Lord all about it. I said, how can you say that, that little to nothing will become of it? He said, because it's vast. And it's in every sector of the government and communities and entertainment industries. And they won't prosecute all. And the people will be very grieved. I heard this week, Yay, because Epstein's um, mistress or wife, who, whomever, girlfriend, she's being prosecuted and she was found guilty. And I said, that's just a little drop in the bucket. Where were all those guys that came along to the island? And so I thought to myself, Lord, you know way in advance how to tell us. Don't get your hopes up. Just hang in there. It will be easy to desensitize yourself as you watch disaster after disaster occur. Even the media will ignore long-term devastation. I'm just reading these from past notes that were said. Plagues and unknown diseases will stump medical doctors. Metal ins mental insanity will overwhelm hospitals, prisons, and communities. Nick takes them all the time to specialty hospitals. In fact, you really can't walk into an ER without a section of an ER room used for um, mental illness, suicide prevention, uh, severe depression. And continual counselors are being called in. I know somebody, she works with the 12, the 6 through 12-year-olds. And she said, you would not believe. You would not believe the children that come in that are severely depressed. And um, I still can't wrap my head quite around that. 
but it's easy to desensitize yourself after you watch these disasters happen. Plagues and unknown diseases will stump medical doctors. Mental insanity will overwhelm hospitals, prisons, and communities. What others label as mental and emotional instability, even clinical psychiatrists and physicians will not recognize the roots of spiritual strongholds and demonic influences. But my delivering power, it must operate in the believer's life to set the captive free. The weather will exceed any prediction, will far exceed any prediction. It will mirror what is happening in the spirit realm. For what is released from people's lips and actions will take form and begin to be seen in the atmosphere around them. Destruction will parallel the spiritual condition of man. Some will see the prophetic happening right before their eyes and know that they're seeing a warning from the Lord. They will seek his direction. They will come under my covering. And they will begin to pray like they've never prayed before. That was 2019. That was just a, a, a blurp. In 2020, I remember God gave me little sound bites. I went, what is this? One-liners is what I call them. Senate and House representatives will shred themselves. Ooh. Those things done in secret, I will expose openly. This will cause a disruption unlike any other time in history. I went, oh, okay. <laughs> sure enough, the government's in disarray. The uncertainty of nations will cause much stress, and there'll be no more fence to ride. You're either all in or you're all out. In fact, the devil owns a fence, and it's his territory. So make sure you get on my side the sight of the Lord. Believers that live in wrong areas will make the decision just to up and move and reposition themselves. They will sense an urgency in the spirit that they can't shake. They'll move according to the church they're going to attend. Isn't that interesting? I heard that the other day. I'm checking out some churches in Montana. That'll let us know where to relocate. Or, you know what? I'm going south. So I'm checking this town out to make sure I want to be close enough to a spirit-filled, born-again, believing remnant church. Hmm. And then in 2020, first word of the year, quarantine yourself in the household of faith. Remember that? Is, if there's, is there enough Jesus in the house? I remember there's a coming debris field only to find out they're like 17 times more asteroid debris little particles out there flying through that we're flying through. And God kept us. But sure enough, as I tracked space weather, so they'd show up. Oh, they're here, here, here. They begin to trace them. And you'll find it in the news, a lot of things about asteroids and NASA and going up there and, you know, going to shoot one down. You know, kind of bump it off course, that kind of stuff. Remember this? They will not be able to predict the weather. The medical system will collapse. That was in July of 2020. They will cut off, passages will be cut off and roads rerouted. And I thought, when did that happen, Lord? And then I turned on what we call the two preachers. And I saw the mudslides and landslides that occurred and they had to go around and they had to make new New ways, whole wash, roads were totally washed away. Roads that were there for 50 years are missing. Of course, when you were in Guatemala, there weren't no roads. I, I looked at one road and I thought, there's no way you could drive up that road. They did. They just let the truck roll with it, like, bloop, and then it would come back up. And I thought, how do you do that? You're standing in the back. And they're going up the hill, the mountain. I'm like, whoa. That was a washout three weeks ago. But we're still going to go find the church. 
The ground will become unstable. This is a trial run. Remember that? The horses are in the gate. Remember that word. You got angels one Sunday morning. It's the Holy Spirit. Tell them they got angels. Tell them not to compromise the instruction of the Lord. The ungodly will shift. The righteous will remain. You have fasted, prayed, and repented for this nation, and it's my turn now, said the Lord. Next week, this will be a different nation. And most certainly it was in that election. It was a different nation from that moment on. Then in 2021, great betrayal within the government and judicial system will cause a somber knowing of what is to come. That was January a year ago. Don't be shaken. Don't be soon shaken. Close scrutiny of every social account and word published will lead to censoring unprecedented. Speak the wrong thing aloud, it'll become a reason for dismissal and questioning. Freedom will never again be more precious than it is right now. Real news will be difficult to find. You will have to trust God to direct your life. So that was last year, and those were years before. As I read them, I, th- I went through them, and I thought, well, you guys sure got beaten up. You had to learn to grow up. You had to learn to look at words, put in food pantries, keep maintain your cars, stay ahead of everything, don't throw out your leather shoes that you really like. It's just stuff, okay? Y'all grew up. I did tell somebody the other day, we have no weenies. We have mature believers, and they couldn't believe it. Wow. You have a church with mature believers in it? They can handle the truth of the word of God? I said, yeah, sometimes we take them deep into the word, and they're good. They're good for it. So this was the word of the Lord for this year. There is a coming seriousness. Chew on that. Shelter in place. I asked the Lord, what does that mean? Bitter cold is coming. That was this morning. Bitter cold is coming. What does that mean? Do you want me to say that today? Yes, put it in there. Well, I do know the hearts of men can wax cold. Their love can wax cold. There's a great shaking in the spirit realm beginning to happen. Seismic activity on earth And in the heavens. How do you get seismic activity in the heavens? I'm thinking on that, Ben. Things will shift quickly and without notice. Many will be taken off guard. The cry goes forth and the warning has been heard. I know in August, I came up the road. I'd run downtown. I came up the road to find, and I have the photo of it. I took a photo. Sunlight coming down on a tree across from my property, and it was hot yellow, right in the middle of all the green in August. First of all, this tree never turns color, and I was puzzled by it. I thought, what? I was so puzzled. I flipped my car around, did a Ewing, came up and sat and parked, and then, of course, the police car came, sat beside me, rolled down his window and said, ma'am, are you Okay. I said, yeah, but I'm looking at this tree. And I heard the Lord say, it'll come without notice. I went, whoa. So Nick comes home. Nick doesn't doesn't pay attention to trees. Are you kidding? You know, Nick's into rescuing people. And um, I'm into rescuing souls. And uh, he does that too. But he also helps people. So he comes up the road. He drives in the drive. He goes, honey. I need to tell you something. (laughs) There's a tree across the road. I've never seen it turn yellow before, but it, it is hot yellow. 
something's wrong. I went, it'll come without notice is what the Holy Spirit said. I saw it too. He said, yeah, but I left on an EMS run and it wasn't yellow. And I came back and it was yellow. I went, I know, it's the Lord. He's trying to get my attention. And then I told you. A couple days later, it all turned brown. And it didn't turn yellow and fall to the ground like normal leaves. It turned brown within 48 hours and fell to the ground. And I said, Lord. And he said, and it will follow with destruction. I went, oh. What does that mean? So now I pay attention. I pay attention to when God shows me something. Hmm. So the cry goes forth and the warning has been heard and the church body has strengthened themselves and clung to the word of God and prayer. I thank you guys for praying. You know how to pray. When, when I put out a call for you to pray, did you know... I tell you not to respond back. Because what happens is I get 33 messages that go, got it, Pastor, on it, praying right now. Pastor, how do you want us to pray on this? I just want you to stop, and in your own simple faith, however you pray, I just want you to say, Father, right now, I ask you to heal so-and-so. You'd go before them. Protect them and keep them and deliver them from this sickness or that disease. Or protect them. Father, as they're in that accident, give the fire department knowledge how to how to get them out safely and give them great peace and then you go about your dishes and then i get this little call back it either gives me a little update that says pray this way too and sometimes i might send that out sometimes i get it's all good we're all safe now i go thank you jesus why do i dump that on a few of you uh, nick and i have um the church has purchased some books, and it's called um, Prayers, Praying, The Effectual Fervent Prayer of a Righteous Man Avails Much. Good enough. That's not it. Prayers That Avail Much is, is the name, and it's a commemorative book, so it has all three volumes. So you can go, for those of you that go, I don't know how to pray about that. You can just look on there, it says, prayer for depression. Ha! Huh. Father, I thank you. And you just put the name in there, and you can pray that prayer. So we picked one up for every family that prays. And it takes me a little bit to go through eBay or Amazon and find the ones that are used that you get at $8 instead of 42 and then we, so they're all stacked up because we're getting ready to make what we call prayer bags, which Susie and Dave have made a lot of prayer bags over the years, and Carl and Cindy, and and the Lord said, so this is your next assignment. He, he gives it to me in advance. And thank the Lord for a great husband. He, he just does it. He just looks at it and goes, what? Another six books? I'm counting like counting the families. Lord, this is how many you said. Many people. I heard the Lord say this. So I asked him, what do you want me to say? What don't you want me to say? Sometimes he'll say, don't say that one. That's just for you to know. Hmm. He said, don't go to bed and try and sleep it off. So I don't know who this is for. This was not a prophetic word. This was a word of instruction. Don't go to bed and try to sleep it off. Do not put your head under the cover spiritually. Do not decide to take a seven-week movie marathon on or play 11 hours on your computer games to avoid what is happening that you need to pray over. It will not dull the ache in you. You will have to deal with your life. Mass confusion will be around you in chaos for those that have not fully surrendered their lives to Jesus. For truly, he's the Prince of Peace. And he will bring you peace. Not your movie ther therapy, or your computer therapy, or your phone therapy. 
I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on me. Now, I know it's a prophetic word going out, but it's not a part of, of this. But I threw it in there because I heard him say it. Tell him, don't go to bed and cover your head. Sit up and pray. All right, now we'll get on to the word. I know. I already did the other one. I think there was one. There's a great shaking in the spirit realm beginning to happen. Seismic activity on earth and in the heavens. Things will shift quickly and without notice, and many will be taken off guard. Okay, number two. As things become tighter financially, the stress level will rise. Lawlessness and words that are, listen to this, words that are ancient to our vocabulary will be used to describe what is happening. You will see the words phenomenon, outlawry, combustion, tumultuous, and garboil. Sorry, that's what he said. Those are not words I see often. Well, that's a phenomenon. Have you, do you remember when the word lawlessness became popular? About two years ago? When had you heard that outside of Matthew 24? Because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will wax cold. Never heard the word lawlessness. What is garboil? I'm like looking at this going, tumultuous, combustion, outlawry, phenomenon. Common words will change meaning and be considered estranged from the dictionaries of old. They'll just take them right out of the dictionary. I thought, really, Lord? If he says it, it will happen. Land and house will be valuable beyond value. Do not snap up an offer unless you are willing to move to a different state. Natural resources will be taxed and owned. That means water and wood. Wood will be taxed and owned with the rights governed and sought after by states and governments. Hmm. I do know this. A long time ago, the Lord told me one day they will tax your well water as a natural resource. So when I hear that, the land and house will be valuable beyond value. Don't snap up an offer unless you're really willing to move to a different state. Natural resources will be taxed and owned with the rights governed by states and governments. Did you know that there are some states that if you put out a rain barrel, it's illegal to catch rainwater or to alter it and have that little funnel and spout go towards your garden? And you must have a rain-absorbing driveway. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they made those, but apparently they do, I guess. This is a new one for you. Names of places will change. Territories and counties will shift their lines and their regions and change the name. How'd you like your city to change names? Because they decided to change it. Or split your county in half and call it this or that. So after this was written, I did see that there was uh, a representative in Michigan. Sometimes I look one of these words up to see if it's happening. There was a representative in Michigan who always, she was running for this county that she lived in. But they changed her county. So all of her advertising was in this county. But now she represents this county and she has no idea because they changed the line. I'm like, oh, now you belong in this county. Oh, I don't even know that county. Start over. <laughs> okay, there will be no hope medically for many. We heard that word earlier, a little bit. The wisdom of the old will be sought after. People will ask the old people questions because apparently they think you're smart. 
I'm free floating on this a little. They think you're full of wisdom. They got a nurse over there. Yeah. They'll check her out. Hey, what do you think this is? You know, could you check this? Can you do this? They call EMS all the time. Hey, Nick, I got a crank in my neck. I can't move my head. What do you think happened? You know, can you pray for me? And Nick prays. And then their head goes, Cut. oh, thank you. That was good. He didn't even have to go in there and do anything. It's called, you're calling on a higher physician. The wisdom of the old will be sought after. Sorry for that bunny trail. People will make their own treatments and search for cures on their own. Home remedies for skin ailments and lesions will cause the tea and herb industry to become very profitable. American-made, homespun, homemade, pesticide-free, naturally grown, cotton wool, linen, and real earth fabrics, foods, and products will become very valuable because you'll know the ingredients. The global system will come after the holy word of God, the Bible. Even the Bible will begin to change versions. Once thought to be solid will be altered. They will be forced to modernize in their interpretation and light of the new culture that is emerging. Hmm. Here's another one for you. The vax is not the mark of the beast, just so you know that. It's not the mark of the beast. Next thing in line, what you have invested in will turn direction. Don't ask me what that means. He just gave me the word and I repeated it. What you have invested in will turn direction. Here's another word. Sometimes they're one-liners he gives. Tyranny will increase and violence in the streets. What do you call that thing, the ride of Paul Revere? What's it called? Midnight ride of Paul Revere, not John Revere. Listen, my children, and you shall hear. Okay, let me tell you this. That will be actually quoted this year by people. Because it will be duplicated where there's warning that goes out on a street or an area with violence. And it will feel as though there is Paul Revere writing. I know. Tyranny will increase, it said. Irrational fighting over things that really do not matter. Everyone will want their fair share, and rational, the word rational, will no longer exist in people's lives. This will separate many people. We used to say it was common sense, but the Lord used the word rational. There will be an aggressive attempt to remove all weaponry. Safety will become a concern. The words, watch your back, walk carefully down the street, avoid confrontation, self-defense instruction will become a weak end sport. Carry your own weapon of choice. Now, guys, this is just hilarious, but I went into the resale shop. So the Lord had already given these words, you know. I went into the resale shop this week, and there was a meat fork. Now, mind you, this is not a little meat fork. Everybody knows what it is to stab a ham. You got those long pokies. This was a four porker that you grab a whole ham with, you know, a big fork. And it had little curves with hooks and sharp ends. And I picked that fork up. I thought, Yo, I should have bought it. It's 50 cents, guys. I should have bought it for illustration. I went, whoa. And the lady next to me, she leans over. She goes, I'm changing the cutlery out of my purse. <laughs> I should be buying that fork. It's probably better than the mace. That's what she said. Probably better than the mace. I went, okay. 
So if you decide you're carrying cutlery in your purse for protection, you will want to shop the resale shops. I've never seen a fork like that. I looked at it and went, yo, okay. And she said, I think I'm going to buy that. Don't encounter her in the dark. Okay. Children will become a priceless commodity. Mm. A healthy infant will become scarce. The adoption price will become six figures on up. I went, whoa. So I went to the grocery store to check this out. You need to do it next time. Do you remember your shopping carts? They made those front of those little shopping carts so you could put your babies in them and strap them in. I want you to count how many babies are in the front of the carts. Three. Three. Of course, my been because I was only shopping at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Maybe they were all down for their nap. I don't know. But I didn't notice hardly anybody and save a lot. They had a baby in a cart. One. Walmart is past like th three kids. And if you do see a bunch of little children, it's like a stock full. That mama's got her pantry full. They're riding in the cart, in the seat, and they're hanging on the back and the front. And it's one family. And you look and you start to, and maybe they keep their children home for safety's sake. I don't know. But I went, whoa. Lord, maybe you're on to something that children will become very priceless, precious, that you should value them, that God gave you an actual treasure in your children. I know many people that say they won't have children now, and many that say we will have one only. Do you remember when you had five? Or five brothers and sisters. Uh, maybe somebody had lost a couple in between or something. But your mom had been pregnant quite often. Or you saw those families. How many brothers and sisters you got? Seven? Six? Maybe? Seven? Really? So there's seven in the family. Eight. That was kind of, it was a big family, but it wasn't unheard of. And when... When Sunday dinner came around, they would all eat together, people would. And so you could have at your table with all the kids, 13, 14 people. Remember that? You just learned to cut the meat smaller and add more potatoes. Pull out an, an extra couple loaves of bread and butter. And that was life. Now, one, possibly two in a family, very different. So children will become a priceless commodity and a healthy infant will become scarce. Interesting. Probably, and uh, I would have to say because maybe of vaccinations, because of medical care not being complete, foreign countries, children come in sickly. Um, and then there was this word. There will be an event of watching the sky. I said, an event? Many will be told to watch. Demonic entities will be legitimized. Aliens and fallen angels will appear to be from other worlds. And people will say this. I saw this in the sky. Now, mind you, when a word goes forth, it doesn't go forth just for this year. The word goes forth, and it, it, it's, it's just forth-reaching. People will be told to watch the sky. I thought, hmm. True worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. Music will morph. And I saw this in the news. So this is not a prophetic word from the Lord. This is a newspaper clipping. The first artificial intelligence worshipers 
the first artificial intelligent worship team has been invented. And they will worship God. And their CD is available. I went, huh? If we can't worship him in spirit and in truth, artificial intelligence? Now I watch it. And I think, hmm, so do we have an artificial intelligence that's going to worship God and lift their hand and pretend? No. The scripture says, for the true worshiper, it says there is a time coming when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks those to worship him. God will know your heart. Interesting. Okay, that was just an extra. Protect your bank accounts and pay your bills. Protect your assets and pay your taxes. And stay on top. In the future, you may not be able to buy or sell without vaccine proof. Already that is happening. But that was an actual word. Don't worry, the vaccine is not the mark of the beast. Erratic weather patterns and bizarre never seen before happenings will make people hibernate in their own familiar territory. I'm not staying home. I do like my cabin. I'm not staying home. How many of you guys like your house? Yeah, comfy, okay? Don't hibernate. In fact, I remember a couple words that said, quarantine yourself in the household of faith, but forsake not the assembly of yourselves together. So people will hibernate in their own familiar territory as erratic weather patterns and bizarre never seen before happenings happen. I told this to you last week. Your blood will become valuable. I went, whoa, Lord. Healthy blood will become valuable. No, I'm not marketing mine. How many of you guys like your blood drawn? Don't come after me. Uh-uh. I don't visit the Red Cross on a weekly basis. I do know some that go every month and donate blood faithfully because they have a buildup of iron in their system. And so they do that regularly. But me, I'm not into pokies. You know? And so you're not going to see me, like, volunteering. Please, I'll donate it. Now, I'm going to tell you, I suppose if you paid the right price, all of you would go and donate a pint. Oh, not a pint. What are they called? It's, it's a whole pint? Unit? Yeah. I'm sure if they paid you enough, you might donate your pint. If you thought, hey, geez, that'll pay the house payment this year. <laughs> All right. There will not be enough beds for the feeble, and institutions will not have enough st staff to care for them. I heard that word prior. Remember? They will offer family to come and get them. I wasn't going to share this word for you because I thought it, you might not like it. But the Lord did say it would happen. They will offer your family to come and take you, take them, because there's not enough room with staff. You, you have to have so much staff per patient. And if you say you can't, then compassionate care will be offered. Euthanasia is just around the corner for some. There has been an assignment of the enemy to take out the leadership these past four years, but it has increased. Godly ministers will die. That has been an attack. That has been an assignment to remove them out. Perry Stone, I turned on the other day, and he said, yes, 
They said the enemy, he, he saw a demonic spirit speaking. And you can find this. Uh, it's Perry Stone. I think it's probably within the last month, um, last couple weeks, that he said that um, his dad had a vision and a man currently had a vision. And the, the Lord spoke to him and said, that's an assignment to come against the ministers and the leadership to remove them, especially if they carry an anointing. So pray for your pastors. Plead the blood of Jesus on those that are anointed in the word and in active ministry and call in warring angels to do warfare in their behalf. I liked how he said that. Now, this year, I know Marcus Lamb uh, passed away from Daystar. And I know of other ministers that have passed away. I know some that are very sickly. And I mentioned one uh, last week. I mentioned Gloria Copeland is very ill with dementia. And it's been for a few years, and she had a traumatic accident in 1966 with brain injury, and it's accelerated, and so she is no longer ministering. Um, I saw some other ministers of the faith movement that have stepped aside. We saw them step aside a couple years ago, but we've heard of other pastors that say, I'm just too tired. I've heard of military men that can't walk. They can no longer walk the steps. Their physical bodies are exhausted by uh, different things they've gone through, vaccinations, stress. And there's a lot of people that are just throwing in the towel. And they're tired. I see the church, many people that are just tired. Now there has been an assignment to take, I believe, and I will say this, to take out the elderly, those with wisdom. Most of you know nurses have quit. Uh, hospital staff is shortened. Somebody said it's not that every bed is filled. It's that we ha don't have enough nurses to take care of that little wing. Okay, so... Um, some have just, they burn themselves out. Some physically, they're not able. Some emotionally. And so for me to even hear there was only two heart specialists in northern Michigan, that was unheard of. And somebody said, I have to go downstate to my rheumatoid arthritis specialist. There's not one up here. I said, what do you mean? They said, no, 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 they're only downstate now. So certain areas... Um, have better health care. We used to have great health care right here. Please don't get upset of me when I say no, we don't. As some people will say that's just a clinic. <laughs> a real hospital's over here. Yeah, you got to drive two hours. Or this, this is a trauma care facility, but it's so backed up, the patients are lined up down the hallway and the parking lot has patients in them sitting and they'll text your phone when you can come in in the ER. They'll let you know when you can come in. I don't know where that came from. There is, yeah, the medical collapse. There is now an assignment to take out the elderly. And we have had a lot of elderly pass away, people with wisdom, people that are in leadership, people that know what it's like to make do. They can help you, and they can give you encouragement. And um, the elderly are priceless, valuable, and we need them. But if you take them out or take their information out. See, they know how to live during the Great Depression. They know how to home doctor some things. Many of them are doctors and physicians and been caregivers, and they're skilled. But when they all retire and all quit at the same time, you're in trouble. This was one of the last things the Holy Spirit said, even though I have something I want to share. He said, Inform information will be incomplete, 
information will not be complete. You will get half a story. You will get half um, of an instruction. So I am sitting at home. Nick has a radio on. And I'm listening to a two-car PI. What does PI mean? Personal injury. A, a car accident. Two-car PI. Okay? And it calls out for an ambulance. And I guess it dispatched an ambulance called. And they said they're en route. But it was quite a distance away. Probably 15 minutes. And then... About 30 seconds later, maybe 45 seconds later, it said, one person is out of the vehicle. I went, well, that's good. Probably not so bad then. Two car PI, PI, but one is out of the vehicle. And then it says, mind you, these are all like 45 seconds to a minute apart words. Okay. Oops, one person was ejected. Here comes the next word. Second ambulance will be needed, but no call went out. The ambulance person said it, but I didn't hear him paging for anybody. Maybe, uh, maybe I wasn't hooked up correctly, so I got part of the information. That's what I said. <laughs> and then it said, First patient lying in the road. Now, why wasn't that information put back there at the beginning? Instead, it's given four minutes later. Well, that changes the whole scene. Two car PI, PI, one person is out of the vehicle, lying in the middle of the road, been injected from the vehicle. None of that came in at the same time. So now you hear... You hear an ambulance person say, you do have another ambulance en route? I didn't hear anything being paged out. It was awful quiet. So maybe I was hearing just one part of the conversation. And then I heard him said, send another ambulance. We're going to need the fire department. All patients are entrapped. Fifteen minutes later. How come the information wasn't sent at the beginning so the person could prepare 15 minutes down the road? So then I hear the Lord say, see that flock of yours? You've given them increments of information, and they've prepped their lives. They know how to pray now. They're not weenies. They are strong in the Lord. They know that the word of God is a force. They know how to pray fiercely. They know how to stand for righteousness and truth. I'm like, ooh, God, you're good. He goes, yeah, that's a lot, of, lot for them to understand and put together. I heard the Holy Spirit say, heed the Holy Spirit. Pay attention to him this year. Fix your purpose and strengthen yourself by prayer. You will have no place to go but to the throne room. So some of you prayed for Dave Crumball. Pastor Dave, you were praying for him. And I know you got these messages that were long and lengthy, and I'm trying not to, bop, to steal his testimony. Okay. But we updated you along the way on what was happening in his body. And, and he was on a vent, and, and they were trying to get him off a vent, and what was happening. And he's going to share this down the line. But a few days ago, he told me, he said, you know, I was in the biggest warfare of my life. I was in a Western movie in a room in a battle. But I was the only one on my side. All the other cowboys were fighting me. Continually I was in a warfare. He said, I figured it out. I was in the fight for my life. I said, he said, and I was all alone. I said, oh, no, you weren't. You had 33 to 300 people praying for you. 
And the spirit of the Lord every once in a while would rise up in him and he would say out loud, I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Why is in the middle of the battle? Why? Because every day, Cindy would quote to him 12 times a day. I will live and not die. I will declare the works of the Lord. Dave, remember it. But Dave doesn't remember any of that. You always wonder what happens when somebody's in a coma-induced event and they're on, and that he's in a fight. I mean, literally, he said it was, it was like uh, torturous. Like torment to continually be fighting the bad guys for my life. And all of a sudden, he told this a couple days ago to me. I'll tell you why this story is real, and he's going to share the details. Is because, now I know he's watching me right now. Dave, I'm telling on you. He walked outside the room. This is just all in one room. He walked outside the room. On the 29th of November, sometime that day, someone he dearly loved passed away. And as he walked outside the room into the open of light outside into the world, this person passed by him and smiled and waved, headed on his way to heaven. And somebody else walked up to him in this white room, in this, in this white sky outdoors. He didn't know this man by name. This is very interesting, guys. This, will, this story is going to get repeated. Actually, it's going to give Pastor Dave a platform in which to share the share salvation like he has never shared. Because he walked outside, and a man came up to inter- him and introduced himself as Marcus Lamb. <clears throat> and he sat and talked to Dave for a while about, would you learn this little song? And he sang it like 50 times for my little dog that I love so much. And suddenly Dave, you know, he said, I didn't learn the song. I didn't even know who this man is. I was back in the room in my fight. But at one moment, Dave was caught just between life and death. So I checked. I said, Dave, when did that happen? When did this relative pass away? And when did Marcus Lamb pass away? And they were just within a few hours, and I thought to myself, huh. So when he came around, Dave had a hard time remembering details. And so he said, there's this Mr. Lamb guy, and I don't know who he is, but he talked to me in length about this little puppy that he loved, and he wanted me to learn a song to sing. Now, he's going to share this his own way, and sorry, Dave. It's just there's a few people here and a few people there. But what Dave went through was legit. Because that same time frame, both people were passing in and out of. See, I told you when my mom, my daddy passed away that I believe there was a moment I was talking to my daddy and he was not responding. He was totally in a coma. And someone said, well, just his hearing aids. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he don't need them anymore. So I took his hearing aids out. And I thought, well, that was still, that's 24 hours before he passed away. Maybe, maybe 36 hours. He said, he don't he need them anymore. He was standing in that white space of outdoors waiting. And he could hear, but he was waiting. He was no longer present. How can that happen? His body kept working. It kept working. My daddy had stepped outside. And I told people that, and people thought. I was like, you know, I know she's a little touched. No, he's not there. I had a nurse come in and, and say to me, 
he's not there. I went, I know. Cindy said the same thing. We just knew he wasn't there. Jasta said, Mom, Grandpa's gone. It's like he stepped outside. How does that happen? So for that moment, when Dave was caught between life and death, he saw a couple of things. And then he went back into the room to fight. Do you know why? <sighs> Somebody was in his corner fighting for him, and the Spirit of God would not let go. Do you know that's the only reason he's alive and he'll be flying home on Tuesday? He is alive because at that moment he stepped out. Within a short period of time, he stepped back in because somebody was saying, uh-uh, I'm not letting go of this. Uh-uh, I will not let go of this miracle. I will not back down. Death, do you hear me? You can't have him. There's work to do. I called him yesterday. I said, Dave, this platform that God is going to launch you on, this will be a story told in the street. You'll begin to share some things you've never shared. Doors will open to you that have never opened for the gospel. People begin to hear there's life and there's death. And you need to choose everlasting life because it's real. Some of you buffered the enemy, and you would not let people take, be taken out, and that's the reason they're alive today. Some of your kids are alive because mama and daddy wouldn't let them die. Some people are here today in ministry because somebody, some grandma, wouldn't stop praying. Do you know how thin the veil is? The day is coming when you will get to walk right through into eternity with them. This close. I love it. I love it that my daddy, I will see him again for years and years and eons and eons and light years and light years and beyond and beyond and, and forever and ever and ever and my life is this short. But because I chose, chose eternal life, it's... Whew. Revelations 12, 11, And they overcame him. Do you love the hymn is in a little H? Why? Because the devil. There's scriptures that say, and they will look at him and say, That? That deceived the nations? That deceived me into believing I was a nobody and a nothing? That deceived me? And that stole my call? That seduced me? That was a delusion? That? I have never heard anybody call that before. But the scripture says, that? And they overcame him, little h, the devil, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. I want you to begin to go, God, what is my testimony? Now, I've heard a lot of testimony from Dave. Dave has quite a testimony. There's coming a time this year, the Lord didn't give me the time frame, when everybody here will have a testimony. And you will get to share what Jesus has done in your life. Whether it be a short testimony. And this will continue. I don't even know how long this is going to continue. You will share the delivering power and the saving power of Jesus Christ. And how he has saved you. Do you know Kendall lived with me for a little bit why, in between jobs. And he died. He was dying basically at my house. One of my kids ran down the stairs and um, came in, and Nicholas, I think it was, said, Mom, Mom, something's wrong with Uncle Kendall. And I ran up, and there was Kendall, and he was in his very last breaths. His eyes were as large as this, and he was at my home, and he was very sick. But his blood sugar had plummeted. 
And I remember I never prayed so hard in my whole life. I think I got Chapneys. And I remembered, this is before I was an EMT, you know, I, I remembered orange juice. But Kendall was in his last, his last agno breaths. And I thought, well, that ain't going to work. I'm like, where's the honey? You know, I'm trying to find honey so I could give him a teaspoon of honey. That will help raise his blood sugar. There's no honey in the house when you wanted it. You can't find what you want when you want it. So I found some of that disgusting carol syrup, maple syrup. Except Kendall couldn't swallow. But I did know enough that you could put it in his cheeks and maybe, you know. So, I mean, I was, I literally, I had it in my hand and I was shoving his mouth. It's a wonder he didn't suffocate. And I put it in his cheeks, and I rubbed it in his cheeks, and I managed to massage his throat, and I got a little down his throat, and uh, and I saw a little relief. The ambulance is coming, you know. That's what happens, Kendall, when you sit on the front row. I pick on you. He came back to life. When they arrived, his blood sugar levels were 31. After I had given him, I don't know, a quarter of a cup. And I knew God had saved his life and snatched him. And that's why we have him today is because of the spirit of God and wisdom of people. I can't even tell you when I look across to people's lives that were saved. That probably is the only time Kendall came close to death. I don't know. I came close to death about three or four times in my life. And I remember Nick saying to me, why on earth were you in the middle of the train tracks? That was the stupidest thing you ever did. I said, honey, I didn't drive there. No, the enemy picked up my car and put it in the middle of a train tracks. And a train was coming, and the glory of God, like a white cloud, surrounded my car and filled it. And Jesus came and sat in the passenger seat. You can't convince me of anything else. I was caught between life and death. And I was in the battle of my life, except across the street, my daddy was praying for me at that moment. He had just, ten minutes before, called my name out before God and said, Father, cover her with the blood of Jesus. You just don't know the difference you make. This year, you will make a difference. What is your testimony? They overcame the, him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. They said, uh-uh. <laughs> I'm not going to love my life so much here that I'll give it up. Revelations 3. This is still my favorite scripture of all. Because you have kept the word of my patience and guarded it, and you've had patient endurance, you've held fast to my word, I will also keep you from the hour of trial and testing, which is coming on the whole earth to try those who dwell on the earth. I went, oh my goodness. If it wasn't because you knew the word of God and you know how to pray. This year, I want you to strap on your armor. I want you to stand like you've never stood before. I want you to know the power of your prayer actually has snatched people from death into life. And I want you to know that those that have gone before you are waiting The word of God, I want it to become so precious and so sweet to you that every day you're going, God, tell me a secret. Tell me a secret. Show me a secret in your word that I've never seen before. And Jesus, make yourself so real to me 
that there will be nothing that snatches me out of your hand. Nothing. Nothing that snatches me. Nothing can detour me. Nothing can take me off course. I don't care what the media says and what it looks like. I don't care what's going to happen in the world. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking 